Hello and welcome live from the Palatine High School baseball field for the Crosstown Classic, the second matchup between these two rivals this week as Palatine looks for their third sweep of the Vikings in four years. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Luke Jordan, and alongside me is my partner, Emmett Jordan. No, we are not related, but we are both related to the fact that this should be a great baseball game, and we are excited to be here. Yeah, Pirates, um, they've been hot recently since they've got back from Alabama. They've only lost two since then, and they've ha picked up some good wins over uh, Deer was it Deerfield, Burlington Central, and Burlington and Barrington, Central, yes, yeah. and Barrington, and now... They won 4-0 on the road at Prem. We had a good pitching performance from Toby Peterson, and now Peter Mulhern back on the bump after that stellar 110 pitch outing against uh, the Broncos that you guys could have seen last week. Well, for sure, not only has the pitching been better, but the defense has been better. You look back at that victory on Monday against Prem, that's another conference game where they didn't allow any errors. Do you think that this heavy wind will play a factor into that defense today? Well, yeah, looking at the wind forecast, we've got 18 to 20 mile an hour, you know, sustained winds here. Gusts could be definitely higher than that. Um, and yeah, the wind's blowing out to, I believe, we see from the flag about dead center, right center field. So, you know, if somebody gets a hold of the ball here, it could go. Play ball in Palatine and Peter Mulhern is the Pirates pitcher as he starts his outing with a strike. Mulhern, last time we saw him, 6.1 innings pitched, five hits allowed, and two earned runs, walked one and struck out 11 last Wednesday in the victory over the Barrington Broncos that not many expected. We're currently looking at 63 degrees, but I'll tell you what, it feels a lot colder with that wind blowing in your face. A lot of these Pirates wearing long sleeves, as well as the Vikings as Chase Nelson, the sophomore, fouls off that one. Mulhern already building up an 0-2 count. And you know he's gonna try to escape these counts a lot quicker than he did last week. Here's the one two from Mulhern. That's fouled off. So the count stays one and two. Here's Mulhern. Has been great so far in his junior year. Also led the team in earned run average as a sophomore the year prior. Two consecutive balls. Trying to get the K here. This is flung high in the air. And this is gonna be a tough play for Sherman. Trying to read the win. And he can't! As Nelson is going to get on first base. That just goes to show you the power of the natural breeze today. Yeah, I mean, it just started gusting again here. We could hear it coming through our press box window. And just in the last moment, you know, Sherman was camped underneath it, and that thing just took off. Yeah, or some prayers for our buddy Nick Fontanetta out there yeah, tough at the camera. Good thanks to him out there, but usually you try and think, how far back behind of this ball can I get there and still have a chance? Because if it does carry, you need to give yourself a chance to get back. And Sherman was still in the infield when that ball was come on its way down. Probably going to be scored a single. We're going to look for the pickoff. Back at first, Nelson's going to take off for second as this one sweeps by Sherman. And no throw from beyond the foul line. And the Vikings already have a runner in scoring position. They didn't have anybody reach to second at all on Monday. So that's an upgrade for them to say the least. Will Graba's at the plate. Another sophomore in this young lineup. Currently had no one count and fouls another one off. Oh goodness, that almost hit somebody in the football field and he is <laughs> confused as can be. There's some guy walking along the sidelines of the turf and he 
I was uh, confuzzled to see a baseball fly right next to me. Dangerous. Daba could be in the gap, and it will. Nelson's going to stay at third, so runners on the corners with no outs. A hot start for the Vikes bats. Yeah, and great play there. I know it dropped, but Sean Wasserman is going to put up his glove and pretend he's going to catch this ball. And off the bat, we could pretty much tell that that was going to drop, but on second base, Nelson could not, and that's why he's still standing on third. Will Graba did not play Monday against the Pirates, but he's showing why he should have. Starts off his first at bat against the Pirates with a single out to center. Pitch fouled back by Johnny O'Brien, the center fielder. Also Frem's quarterback in the fall. Currently holds offers from Illinois and Northwestern and he is only a sophomore. And Mulhern will step off Pump fake it to third and then turn back to first. Warren will step off again. Trying to keep an eagle's eye on the runners located on the corners. Yeah, and there's a defensive play that could happen here. If the runner on first takes off, you have to make a decision to throw this ball down, either you can let him go um, and throw it down there, and maybe the second baseman cuts it off to try and get the runner coming home, but it's, it's a tough first and third situation. This pitch heads to home plate. Fouled off. Fouled off, so another 0-2 count for Mulhern. Yeah, and Mulhern's working these counts quite well. He's been ahead most of the time. It's just that finishing pitch has not gotten the job done. We got that tough pop-up that probably should have been an out, and then that base hit. O'Brien struggled with the bat. 0 for 3 with two strikeouts on Monday. Trying to avoid his third strikeout in four ABs against the Pirates on the year. Mulhern trying to finish the job. And that'll do it. First strikeout for Peter Mulhern. Comes to the three hole batter and O'Brien, and now one out on the board, but I mean, still a stressful situation to say the least, Emmett. Yeah, it's, it was just a tough start, and a lot in that Barrington game was the start of the inning. When the first runner gets on, that's such a big deal when it comes to the, usually the progression of the inning if you can't get that guy out, so good first out. Second out here without allowing any runs would be crucial to get rid of the threat of a sack fly. Klimas is up to the plate. A one count with one out, and it's thrown back to first. Sherman unable to make the tag in time. And any apologies for this, this camera view. Our camera is taking the brunt of these wins out in center field with the wind blowing out. So, you know, gusts of up to 30 miles an hour going right into the lens of the thing. So if we do have to cut it out for a second, now you understand why. This one's high. Rem entering this game with a three and eight record on the season. Palatine five and 11, if you include their tournament games in Alabama. Otherwise, it's a five and seven record. Yeah, and Palatine's had a tough strength of schedule. They've had some difficult road away games and they've yet to play a home double header yet this entire season. They've had tough tough ones out at, um, in a lot of difficult places like York. That one swung on and missed. Klimas now digging himself into a two and two count. Vikings have not won a game at their home field, but they're three and three on the road. So that's something you see very often. Yeah, I mean, if you take your eyes off of the surroundings, every baseball field's just a baseball field. So yeah. some teams 
you know, they just do better in some areas and you know, maybe it was cold on those home games. It's hard to tell. Here's a 2-2, Mulhern, that is strike three, and that's two strikeouts. Early on for Mulhern, trying to get himself out of this sticky situation, and now he's just one out away from doing so. And he'll have to face Matthew Cabrales in order to get out number three. Don't forget Chase Nelson, who's known for being a fast runner, is leaning right off the third base, so. Sorry, Matthew Cabrales is the pronunciation. Yes, he did. Check swing, but yeah. it looked like a strike anyway. It was. He called it. You could see from here better than the first base coach that's complaining about if he went around. 20 pitches now for Mulhern early on. Through 109 pitches last time we saw him here. Ooh. That was something I mentioned earlier on. You know, Mohorn's not trying to work himself into these deep counts every time, like he did against Barrington. And that'll go with strike two. He's putting the ball around the corners right now of the strike zone. You know, he puts it on the umpire to give him the strike call, and it's really difficult to decide as the hitter to chase after these now. And the 2 2 count, you can expect, you know, the, the hitter to be hunting here for. And there's strike number three. Rest of the defense might have needed a pillow. No action for them. <laughs> All three outs coming from the pitcher's arm in Mulhern. We'll be right back as the Pirates head to the plate when we return. Welcome back into the broadcast. Bottom of the first, and Carter Monroe leads off, like always. It's ball one from the Vikings pitcher and Jack Cryfield. A junior lefty tops out at 83 miles per hour on his most common pitch, of course, the fastball. Cryfield also plays a lot of club baseball. ITB and he led his team with a 2.10 ERA over the last club season. He's got Monroe to a one-on-one -on -one count and the Vikings did struggle with Monroe last game. Arguably the most outstanding hitter for the Pirates in their four nothing victory against the Vikings on Monday. He was three for four, had an RBI, scored a run. Three total bases, so just three singles get on base, that's all that matters. That's the priority. The 
2 2 from Cryfield. It's outside. Catching for Cryfield is Brody Frieders, the senior. Former youth hockey teammate of mine. Before he quit to stick to baseball. That's ball four outside. And Monroe starts his way of the day with a walk. Yeah, and that's this is ju just like with Prem now, you get a runner on base. See what the Pirates can do with this with sauce up at the plate. Lefty on lefty. The most common of occurrences. Wasserman showing bunt and it adds backwards. Pirates had four runs on seven hits just two days ago. Monroe takes off. Oh, they caught him. Wait, wait. We might have, yeah, it's a balk. So it's a balk on Cryfield. So you can see the umpire call time instantly. So sigh relief for Monroe. He avoids getting caught. He got the jump when he saw that. We're still going to look back at Monroe from directly behind his horizon. Currently no balls and a strike to Wasserman early in this count. Once again, still showing that bunt. And Tire a little bit in the way for you guys, but we'll try and tell you exactly where the pitch location is. And we mentioned it last broadcast, when you tend to show bunt, it can also throw the pitcher off on some occurrences. Maybe that's the case here. And there's a strike. Cabrales even came in from the first base bag in case it was bunted down the foul line. Yeah, well they see, when they see that, you're gonna react to make sure you have it a little covered. You can see Cabrales on the edge of the infield. Actually, you can't see him, but he's on the edge of the infield. Well, now Wasserman's got to play, and he puts it in play. Monroe is going to stay at third. It was a bobbled ball out at left by Bond. Well, see, that's the shortest throw you can have from the outfield to the infield is going to be that down the line from right field. It was softly hit, landed only uh, probably 20 feet from the infield, and now first to third for Odo. This is a you know big clutch situation here if he can Knock home one row, expect potentially a steal from Washington as well. Runners on the corners, no outs, and David Odo, the junior, is up to the bag. Went 0 for 2 on Monday. He'll take strike one. All times offense has produced consistently against Frem since 2022. In five games, 35 total runs. Seven runs a game on average. But they've also struggled with defense against the Vikings. We look back to the one baseball game that we, per se, tried to broadcast. Tried to broadcast. Everything was not working Everything was not working. Everything was not working and it's almost deja vu. We didn't have Wi-Fi, but um, Martin Pedersen, the backup catcher, was for this game. For Let's this game, able to at least give us the hot spot. Washington takes off. That's that lefty move, and they got to be here, here. Runner coming home. They're going to get him. And they're going to get Monroe at the plate. Yeah, so that's a mistake by Washington because with the lefty, I was about to mention this as Lucas, you were explaining the story. With the lefty, you have to wait until he commits forward, and Sean went at the leg lift, and that's, that's why he was almost caught. And he would have been out if he would have continued, but Monroe took off probably – at the word of Bello, and now instead of it being just a runner on third with an out, now you have a runner on second with an out, so. It takes away the sack fly opportunity. 
Still a runner in scoring position, but now one out. Instead of the donut on the board previously. Two to count. Try field looking for the K it would be crucial in this position. And he'll get it. First strikeout on the day for Jack Cryfield. And a big second out because they went from a first and third jam, nobody out to runner on second, two outs, but they still have to face Kentucky commit Toby Peterson. We got the battle of two pitchers who can for sure throw strikeouts. Mulhern had 11 strikeouts in his last outing. Last outing for Cryfield, eight strikeouts. So we might see a lot more of what we just saw there. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see where the outfield positions themselves here with the wind blowing out as it is. I think you think if Toby can just put this up in the air a bit, could carry. Cryfield will step off the bag. After a quick eye on Wasserman, he'll throw. A nice pitch there that gets Peterson to swing. Peterson dominated the Vikings from the bump on Monday. Complete game shut out, only three hits allowed, two walks and 10 strikeouts. And already early on in the second game of two on the season between these two teams, Mulhern has registered every out as a strikeout. So through eight innings, 13 strikeouts from the Pirates defensively so far. 1-1 one, one pitch, fouled off to the right after a bounce. That's a nice breaking ball because Peterson was swinging at that like it was a fastball and ended up dipping right to the bottom of his barrel and ends up fouling it off because otherwise that ball's going a long way. This was a runner, uh, runners on the corner situation with zero outs and Cryfield might be able to get out of it with a strike but that breaks outside. So two, two count, two outs. Pressure pitch incoming. And that takes a hop to Frieders. Full count now. Peterson struggled against the Vikes on Monday. Batting wise at least. 0 for 3. Full count fire. Swung on and missed by Peterson. Cryfield gets out of the situation and adds on two strikeouts. We'll be right back after this quick break. Pirates and Vikings, zeros apiece after one in the Crosstown Classic.
welcome back to the top of the second inning. As we're underway. First pitch strike from Mulhern, who threw three strikeouts in the first inning, now facing number three in Cooper Nelson, the junior. This is a Viking squadron still seeking their first conference win on the year. They're currently 0-3. They were swept by Conant, lost 1-6 both times, and then you include the loss for Monday. And they're trying to avoid their first losing MSL conference record since 2018, where they went 7-8. and eight. And that includes the MSL East games, of course. One count for Trooper Nelson. Mulhern with the pitch. That is fouled high in the air. Might be playable, but out of the reach of any pirate, whether it was Greewe or Sherman. Just hear that wind whistling right behind us. It is still just as powerful as when we were trying to set up everything. And there's ball number four for Nelson. He walked on Monday. He'll walk today as well. And he also stole a base on his walk. So you got to watch for that if you're Mulher. Both the Nelsons are known for being great base runners. They both stole a base in the previous game. And now, Mulhern worries about what's at the plate, and that's senior Tommy Shintaku. A nice strike delivery from Mulhern. Now evens the count at one apiece. Mulhern will look back to first, but no issues there for Nelson. He's safe. Prem trying to get out of the slump they've had in the month of April. Currently one and six. And if you take out the 14-1 win against Rolling Meadows just over a week ago, you exclude that, they're only scoring 1.6 runs a game. This is bunted right to Mulhern, so it'll be a sacrifice, but Nelson now in scoring position with one out. And next up, it's the catcher, Brody Frieders. This one's belted down the left foul line. And foul. Very obviously foul. Probably one hopped its way to that fence. And Frieders Attacked. zips this one out to center. Leaping grab Wasserman. Tag up coming from Nelson and he'll get in there no sweat. But still an athletic play in the outfield from the future Firebird. Yeah, that's a tough read right there with this win. Line drive off the bat right at him. You kind of have to kind of sit back and just wait until it gets in front of you to figure out where that ball's going to land. And a good job by Washington to give himself a chance at catching that baseball. So 
So Dennis Bond is now at the plate. And this one gets by Ratajczak. And touching home is Cooper Nelson. First run has arrived and it's on a wild pitch. One count, two outs, two bond. Another foul there, one, two. Bikes have their first lead, or first lead of the two game series with the Pirates. And not only that, but their first run in over nine and two thirds innings of play, or eight and two thirds innings, pardon me. And there's strike number three from Mulhern. Yeah, it's like a good curveball right there to finish off the inning, but that could that run could have been avoided right there if that was kept from getting to the backstop. 1-0, Pirates still in it. Let's see what they could do to match this. Going into the bottom of the second, we'll be right back. And welcome back. Bottom of the second as Mulhern first pitch. What nice a play. play from Nelson and he'll make the toss, no. but it is dropped at first base by Cabrales. Oh, what a snag there at, at shortstop by Cooper Nelson. Like that's, that is an unbelievable play, you know, spinning and it's unfortunate that Cabrales couldn't hold on to that and now Pirates start off the inning fresh again with the runner on base. Tying run on first. Of course, the Vikes scored on the wild pitch previously. And you've got the lefty again. You have to think about on first base if you're Mulhern, don't do what Washman did. If you are going to steal, you have to wait for him to commit home. outside Not a bad performance so far for the junior only one hit allowed struck out two and walked one and of course we're still in the early chapter of his start as he delivers another strike there to Sherman be a one two count one one count yeah, scoreboard's off. <laughs> Scoreboard's been cut since the start of the inning. So. It's all on Jack Oswald, our scoreboard guy. No. Get it right. <laughs> it's not easy when the big board's out up at left field. Yeah. You know, wind can mess up a lot of things. That thing's also wirelessly controlled, just like our setup. It's a little bit older than our setup, but I assume because we have power right now that that is the issue, is the wind. 
Sherman puts this deep out to right field. Wind will blow it out, one hop to the wall. Sherman in with a standing double. Mulhern is stopped at third by Bello. So two runners in scoring position and not a single out recorded yet. Jet Greewe is now stepping to the plate. Yeah, and that's an example of just putting the ball up in the air, let the wind take it. That wasn't hit too hard. Obviously hit hard enough to get out into about midway right field, but the wind's gonna blow that one all the way to the fence. We thought for a second that could get out of here from our view, but now second and third for Greewe. Nobody out, let's see if he can drive home two runs with the base hit here. Greewe, one for three on Monday. Huge RBI opportunity. Or how about this, a wild pitch play at the plate and the throw is missed by Frieders. As Cryfield was covering home, the game is now tied as Mulhern makes his way home off a wild pitch, so. You get one back, that's what, yeah. exactly how Frem scored, how Frem gets one back. Whatever you do, I can do better. So both teams scoring on a wild pitch, kind of a unique way. Very high school way to, to open the scoring. Yes. And Frem's inf infield is yeah, and that's close for a reason. And we could see Greeley's a little upset about himself there missing that bunt because Sherman was taken off. He was 100% going to make it home if he could just put that in fair territory. And now the defense has eyes. You could see they're all in, ready to go into bunt defense. Let's see if, if he changes his approach and try and put one over the infielders. He misses there. Got two strikes. On deck is for Tychek. That'll go with strike three. And Greewe is sent back to the dugout. And now pressure position for Ritaichak, trying to give the Pirates the lead. The run to break the tie over at third. Outside pitch to begin the count from Cryfield. And with that pass ball, one thing that Cryfield's gonna have to think about is that breaking ball in the dirt because you have to rely on your catcher breeders to make the block in order to keep this game tied. Three strikeouts early on from Cryfield after that one to Greewe. This pitch takes a hop but a good block by Freeders and he's gonna head out to the bump to talk to his teammate. What do you think is going on in that conversation right now? I mean, they, th it's actually, there's a lot of ways this could go here. Obviously, you want to try and throw a strike here. I would not be surprised if there is a, if Ritaichek is, you know, going to hold the bat still here. So, probably just, you know, settle it down, pump a fastball down the middle. Pirates really want to keep that one out runner on third, maybe give Ritaichek a chance to hit a fly ball. Riley is on deck. There's a strike delivered. Keep the count alive from Cryfield. So now a 3-1. Cryfield gets for Tychek to miss. He's in his rhythm now. Looking for strikeout number four on the early day. Delivery fouled back, barely over the netting. And that might have hit Nick for all we know. Hopefully not, but maybe he got a souvenir. <laughs> we applaud Nick for standing out in this and taking the brunt of the wind to give you guys some, some of these crisp camera angles. Full count fouled off by Retai Check, stays alive. 
patiently waiting at that third base bag, trying to be driven in to give the Pirates their first lead of the game. And there's a swing and a miss from Retijak. So now two outs, and Joe Riley will need to get on base somehow in order for the Pirates to cash in that second run. Takes heat outside to begin the count. One for three on Monday for the junior. His lone hit was a triple that drove in two. I mean, you know, Emma, with how short these or condensed these fields are, you really don't see too many triples very often. Yeah, it's only 320 down the line here. It does happen, if you can put it down the right field line it, and you have some speed, I know Joe Riley can probably leg out a triple if he can put it over there to cover the longest distance for the total throws. And he fouls that one off. And almost a catch made by Chris Piggott, the longtime head coach of this Rem baseball team. Formerly played at Creighton, got drafted by the Minnesota Twins in 1992. And he also led his basketball team to state as well as, as he was an All-State athlete in football. So he was quite the tri-sport athlete. Before there was Jalen Brunson at Stevenson, <laughs> there was Chris Piggott, apparently. Yeah, but uh, Jalen Brunson, how about that? Two seed, New York yeah. Knicks, they've been hot recently. Face the and Riley the swings three. and misses. Cryfield gets out of another tight situation, as he did in the first, and Frem keeps the ball game tied with the delivery there. My name is Luke Jordan, alongside me is Emma Jordan. We'll be And back for the third inning of action. Mulhern back out on the bump facing Cooper Nelson. Actually, Chase Nelson, correction. He misses high with ball one. And Chase Nelson will fly that over the backstop. Foul. mentioned that Chris Piggott was quite the athlete and also from the former home of Mike Talkman. Yeah, Cubs player. Every time I see him up there, I think, <laughs> yo, that guy's from our town. Isn't that exactly. crazy? Yeah. It says hometown Palatine, Illinois. 
up on the Wrigley Field big board, so that always makes me feel good about our town. And Nelson right. rips this one out to right field, trying to make an athletic play deep out as Greewe, he can't do so. And Chase Nelson will be held at second base. And we'll still give credit for to Greewe for getting that ball in as fast as he could. That kept that at just a double there for Cooper. And Chase. But yeah, so he kind of, Jet was going back on one side and he saw he had to flip his hips to get to that ball. And had he you know, chosen correctly the first time, he might have had a chance at that baseball. Will Graba now up to the plate. He Don't shows bunts. bunts. Yeah. with the ball. Shows bunt again, and that is fouled off. One, one count. And with the runner on second here, getting this bunt in is gonna be crucial here for Brem if they want to get a, the runner advance and still have a shot at the sack fly chance. It's a little bit tougher defense to get the guy at third than at second. Mulhern is now five pitches away from 50 in the top of the third. So like Barrington did, I mean, these batters are consistently running Mulhern deep into these counts. And we've seen the stamina from Mohern. If he can you know, stay ahead, he, he can go a long way. Tough pitch is still taken in by Ratajczak. Could have been deadly there and would have gotten Chase Nelson at third. No brainer. and it's another foul bunt. And two good chances there spoiled by Graba. And he's mad at himself, mad at himself. you could expect he's gonna have to swing away here. Two, two count, no outs. Mohan checks back and is gonna look. Oh, oh. that got by. And Chase Nelson was debating it, but he'll stay at the second bag instead of try to roll the dice. Yeah, he made the right decision too. Well, that's why I don't play baseball, because I was gonna say, well, in my decision, I would definitely go to third there, but you don't realize how quickly that they can get that to third. Yeah, and at this level and with that player in center field, you're not, you're not gonna run that out when he's only maybe 15 feet from the cutoff. And that is fouled by Grable. So at a 2-2 count, this will be pitch number 50 for Peter. And it's fouled off right above us. Oh, that did not hit Font that time. That bounced out to the baseball. We heard some bleachers <laughs> take a bump there. Font is getting peppered, but he has so far survived. I mean, he's got to deal with the wind. He's playing dodgeball out there. I mean, dodgeball with baseball. That does not sound fun. And there's strike three delivered from Mulhern. Another strikeout as both these pitchers have dueled to start. Cryfield's got five. And with that out there, so does Mulhern. So for every 10 pitches a strikeout, that's a pretty good pace if you're Peter. And now he faces Johnny O'Brien. One out, still that runner in scoring position. And he might take off here. Ooh, great play by Monroe, who zips it to first, not in time, and it bounces over the mid of Sherman. Nelson will score. Frem has now the lead. And that's a great play by Monroe to track it down, but 
Sherman has to get that ball, even with it being in the dirt, because that should not score a run. You know, and I know Monroe was going for the play there and had a little bit of a chance at it, but when you're backpedaling and you have to you have to throw that off your back foot with a lot less pace than you'd like, sometimes you just have to decide whether or not to even throw that ball to even risk that happening in the first place because, you know, said you're sitting with first and third and you could still get the double play, but now there's another run on the board. And this could be threatening more. It's deep out to center. Wasserman on the run, can't get it. O'Brien around second, headed home. And the Vikings lead by a pair. As Will Climas adds on to the list of standing doubles. Yeah, he got a hold of that ball. And similar with what we saw at Greeley, Wass turned his hips the, the other way when he probably could have got, potentially got him they'd go in, going the other way, but really difficult to track that and with the wind carrying that baseball. That's, that's tough to even get to the track on a clear day. Right side, Cubs just won. Five to three over the D-backs. And that is, they won last night, right? That should be a sweep. No, I don't think, I don't think, I think they lost in extras? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, they had the lead for, what, yeah. Yeah, you're right, they lost in 10. 12 to 11, what did I miss last so night? What in the yeah, world? Ian Hip hit, it, Ian Cap hit a grand slam. They go up 11-8, and then um, bullpen pitching as per usual with the Cubbies. Um, suspect. All right, well, at least that's another series one. They've been consistent with winning two out of three, minus the Padres. I mean, th that was a tough road stretch there. They've, they've been away at a bunch of the, some of the best West Coast teams, and now they finally get to come home. Not bad. Definitely will take it as a Cubs fan myself. Peter Nesky gets the win. Here's Mulhern after Coming to that huddle. It's a 2 1 count. Swing and a miss from Cabrales. And now evens the balls and strikes. Mulhern could use this, and he gets it. Another strikeout, number six for the junior Mulhern. And now that takes a lot of weight off the shoulders on this at bat. Still plenty of it, but with two outs, it's restricting the front batter for sure, which is Cooper Nelson. Nelson walked in his first plate appearance. The front dugout is loving Mulhern stepping off the bump for a second there. Pitch to has a ball. Take another pause. Just trying to get his rhythm back. The Frem dugout is pounding their hands on the top of the dugout to try and get in Mulhern's head. Yeah, they're getting the ball. It seems to be working. I believe that's a 3 0 count. Like we said, that big board out at left is still inactive, so. 
relying on the scorekeeping up here. And that is irrelevant, as this one is headed out in to the gap. Deep at right field, that is off the wall, not gone, but it still scores a run as Klimas touches home. This will be a triple, no doubt, for Cooper Nelson. That ball was hammered up into the wind again. And that time, the wind blowing out, I think, messed with Greeley's chance of getting that ball because he was right under it, and then it landed right behind him. He sort of stopped running when it was pretty much on top of him. I don't know if he could have got that or not. But hard contact is the reason Fremd is running up the score now. Back number one to Tommy Shintaku. No action in the bullpen now, but I'm sure we'll definitely have to take a peek or two while the Pirates are batting. Not your typical performance from Mulhern. Uh, one thing he was gifted with in that Barrington game was good weather and not a lot of wind. And mm -hmm. you know, a lot of these base hits have been a, a product of that wind. You know, some, some fly balls that are caught on a normal day like the last few we've seen. One, two count. Mulhern's at 63 pitches. As he kicks and fires this one. Foul high into the air and that is not playable. Three of the four runs have been earned runs for Mulhern. He had two earned runs against Barrington in that 5-2 victory. Both defenses are struggling early on. Palatine with two errors, Vikings with one. Two, two, count, two outs. Mulhern trying to finish the job here. And he gets it. So, work to do. It could have been 5-1 at least. You know, he got that runner there on third. Mulhern gets out of it. He seems a little bit irritated, but we'll see if he stays in for the next and tries to redeem himself. For now, it's time to rely on the Pirate Bats as we will be right back. Hello, welcome back. We got bottom of the third. 4-1 lead for the Vikings. And Monroe is back up to the plate. was talking earlier in the day about how that wind's going to be blowing outward. All you got to, he was saying, all you got to do is elevate the ball, and that is something that Fremd has done that Palatine has not. 
we're going to see more bat to ball as the innings go on. Byfield delivers, and that's outside. Monroe worked a walk earlier. Eventually made his way to third, but then got caught stealing at home. Would have been the Pirates' first run. Monroe takes another strike. Full count now. Step off. And Monroe puts this into play. Looks playable for Nelson, and it is. Down, two to go for Jack Cryfield. It's pitched a great game so far. Sean Wasserman steps in, takes strike one. Wasserman. Grounded right through the gap, and it can't be fielded by Cooper Nelson, and Wasserman is on base. David Odo now. Starts with a strike. And he swings at a low ball. And now he's digging himself his own hole. Ryfield looking for the K, instead he'll look over to first base. Emin and I discussed that earlier about how a huge advantage for Cryfield over at first. And he caught Wasserman earlier. Wasserman takes off this time, but it's fouled off by Odo, who stays alive in the count. On deck is Toby Peterson, if needed. Another foul off from Odo, just trying to rack up the pitch count on Cryfield, who now has 56 from that left arm. He threw for six innings the last time he pitched against Conant. Wasserman takes off, and he's in that pickle again, and they'll get him at second base. Wonderful awareness from Jack Cryfield, and he's now got two outs, and nobody is on base. And he's one strike away from sending the Vikings to the bats. That's the magic of baseball. You don't know what you're stepping into on the day of the game. 4-0 win for Palatine on Monday, a 4-1 lead for the Vikings. And they'll keep that. Another strikeout from Cryfield, and he's fired up as Frem looks to extend the 3-1 lead when we return. Top of the fourth, arriving shortly.
Hello and welcome back. Top of the fourth has arrived. Uh, we'll do a quick box score review. Of course, the score, four to one. Brem leads in the Crosstown Classic game number two. Trying to even the series and avoid being swept by Palatine for the third time in four years. The hits, Fremd with six, Palatine with three, and three total errors, two of them coming from Palatine and Uno from the Vikings. One two count now to Brody Frieders, the delivery. Swung on in the dirt, and Retaichak will just have to make the toss to first, which he does. And out number one has been registered. Bond is now up, currently 0 for 1. Mullen has now eclipsed 70 pitches. And that front dugout still bringing a lot of noise, just as you'd expect in a rivalry like this. 2 0 count early. Mullen top trying to change things. Can't do so. And Bond is slowly, slowly working his way into a walk here. And that's a four ball walk for Dennis Bond. Hot start from Mulhern to top of the inning, but he was cooled down there by the junior. And now Chase Nelson is up. Nelson's two for two. Red hot game and he continues it straight into left field. That's a single. We'll hold Bond at second. So runners on the first two. What a game it's been. Chase Nelson is killing it after going one for three on Monday. Struck out twice. Everybody has a hot and a cold game, but this is a fiery start from the underclassmen, only a sophomore. Mulhern throws heat. It's a swing and a miss from Will Graba. Batting 500 on the day. Graber swings and misses again. Two count. Two runners on the bags. As Mulhern will step off. We'll see how long Mulhern goes this time. 78 pitches currently. Through 109 in his last out. He'll step off the bag here. Keeping an eagle's eye on Dennis Bond over at second. for the strikeout, won't get it there. It's a hop in the dirt, but blocked by the mitt of her tie check. Trying to avoid another wild pitch, the fashion that the Vikings scored in for their first run. And this one goes high. Mm 
Mulhern finds himself in a full count. Crucial pitch here. And it's wide foul. We'll try the full count pitch again. Couldn't get him there, and it's a walk. As Will Graba now loads the bases with one out. And no time called here from the Pirates. They're going to let it play. And nobody in the bullpen either. Yeah, as I was walking out there to fix the camera, I saw Caden McPartland and Liam Arnold go out there to you know, stretch, they're not out there throwing anymore, but they're gonna ride with Petey, hopefully have them get their last two outs of this inning. Well, they're not gonna come on easy without taking some damage here. I mean, of course, the mo most ideal situation is two straight strikeouts, but much easier double, said than done. Double plays, actually. Well, that too. Uh, ground ball to the middle infield, maybe the third base. Be a gift right here for the Pirates. Gotta be careful with these fast base runners from Frem. And you can see Monroe and Riley, they're in what you call double play depth. You usually play about two steps closer to second base. Turn those double plays if that ball's in the dirt. And if you're newly joining us, that shake in the camera is not somebody just messing with it. That is just the power of the wind that we're seeing in today's matchup. Between 15 and 20 miles per hour, it's ranged throughout the sequence of the game. And a swing and a miss there from O'Brien. So Mulhern gets one strikeout, but he's got one more to go. It'll be Will Climus next. And last, last at bat hit a scorching ball to center field, so let's see if Mohorn can win the battle this time. This one's a ball. So even the count there. Reba on first, Nelson on second, Bond on third. It's a full house for Fremd, and that one's fouled off the mask of Retaichak. That's why they make those things good. He's gonna get a moment to collect himself, but having worn those mask, that mask myself, it's not comfortable, but obviously it's come a long way from the old you know, bucket hat and the thing that's on your cover. It goes all off your jaw pretty much. And that one, he's got the whole kind of hockey goalie style. And that's usually the newer, safer option for today. Mulhern needing one more strike. One, two, count, two outs to beat the loaded bases here. Here's the fire. High and outside. And this one's strike three as Mulhern gets out of a beyond sticky situation. Thankfully, no run scored from the loaded bases as now the Pirates look to get some revenge going in the bottom of the fourth. We'll be right back. Luke Jordan and Emmett Jordan on the call.
Back for the bottom of the fourth, Toby Peterson up. Pirates down 4-1. Looking to make the start of a comeback here with the Kentucky commit up to bat. Cryfield still on the mound for Friend. Misses low with a breaking ball on the dirt. Cuts over that fastball there. That's a pitch he's going to try and look at and put that ball into play. Fastball hitter can give that ball a ride in this wind. And in there for strike two. Misses away, you know, two, two count. Two, two from Cryfield. Swing and a miss, Toby Peterson. Goes down swing for the second time today. Something to acknowledge, I just Came back up and I saw David Odo running out to the bullpen with Pedersen. So it could have been neither of the guys we expected in Arnold or McPartland. It might be Odo, we'll see. But for now, Peter Mulhern on the offensive side puts one into a gap. And that's a crucial single there. Yeah, way to help yourself out. The pitcher flares one into shallow center field for a base hit. Perhaps that's the spark in an offense averaging nearly four runs a game. They're dry through the first three and a third of the bottom of the fourth inning. Not the same matchup we saw last broadcast against Fremd, you're talking about the one we did last year. That was kind of a nightmare, but Sherman puts that right out to right field and that's an easy grab for Chase Nelson. Two outs now. Yeah, it seemed like the wind stopped blowing there for a second. Yeah. It seems like whenever we hit the ball, it stops blowing. And when we hit the ball, it's always at a Fremd outfielder, but <laughs> that's how it goes sometimes. Jack Rewe now steps in. And like I was saying, I think the last time we saw these two teams play here, our broadcast lasted over three hours, I believe. Yeah, it was something like 18, <laughs> 10. 19, 11. 19, 11. It yeah, was maybe 10, 9 at the end of the second inning. Yeah. Brutal game to watch. There's a lot of offense, but a lot of bad defense. Yeah, too much offense, which I never thought I would say that once in my life until I saw that game. I mean, I would say too much offense is in baseball is fun. The problem is there was maybe like 20 walks in that game. Yeah, true. Too much bad offense. I think yeah. that's a and it was a hot day. Clear we description. Were, we were yeah. in this booth that has no AC. Three we takes inside. 2-0 now. Pirates praying for a two-out rally. As it's just kind of felt dead. Mulhern takes off for second. Throw is inaccurate from Freeders, but held in the infield. Yeah, good jump from Mulhern, and he's given a gift by that pitch being way upstairs. Freeders had to almost jump for that ball, and that gave him an extra second. Rio from Cryfield, and that'll be a four ball walk for Greeley. So now two runners on. 
And next up is Ben Ratajczak. So Greewee now 0 for 1 with a walk. Ratajczak is 0 for 1 up to this point. will deliver to try field. Same thing. This is put high in the air. It's going to be playable, but like we said, this is a difficult play to make, but it's done well by Graba. And Fremd allows no runs in the inning, emits two on the bag at the end. And now they look to extend. We'll be right back here on PHSPTV. It's the Crosstown Classic live on YouTube. Four innings done, three to go. Here at Palatine's home field. First pitch is fouled right into the football field. Looking about just the 30 yard line. Our box score review, we got four runs, seven hits and one error for the Vikings. One run, four hits and two errors for the Pirates. There's a strikeout to start the inning for Mulhern. That's crucial. Yeah, Mulhern's up to 93 pitches, which is a lot for having only thrown four and a third. This is almost certainly his last inning given who they have set to go next. A couple options, and he only went up to about, I believe it was 107. So after that pitch, that's now... Game, yeah. That's now 203 pitches and counting in his last two outings. He threw 109 and 24 batters previously against Barrington. I just keep thinking about how fun of a game that was. This Ooh. is accidentally put into fair play and <laughs> taking a stumble 
trying to make his way around Sherman was Cooper Nelson, but there's well, quite honestly nothing he could do there. Yeah, and literally nothing he could do there because as Cooper Nelson, base path rule means you have to you have to run straight to the base, and when you're running to first, there's a handy line for you. If you stray too far away from that line, like he did, trying to avoid that tag, you're out anyways. I mean, what about uh, what about testing the vertical then? <laughs> Dumping over Sherman. <laughs> Shintaku's up to the plate. Yes, he did, yeah. It's one around. And there's another strikeout, Mulhern. A great inning there, and now the Pirates need three runs to tie this thing up. It's the bottom of the fifth coming up right next. Joe Riley up to the plate to start off the bottom of the fifth after the quick one, two, three inning from Mulhern. Just having a little scoreboard malfunction. That'll take another 20 seconds to fix, so don't worry about that. Yeah, keep you posted with the ball strike count until we're ready to go. Riley. Foul ball, but it could be playable. Ooh. On his high horse was Chase Nelson, but couldn't make it in time. Yeah, Cryfield now to 74 pitches. He's, he's still definitely got some left in the tank. Yeah, the pitch counts were pretty even for the first three innings or so, but Cryfield's just taking care of these Pirate batters so quickly, and not only that, but the Pirates not generating as many hits as their opponent. That'll help your arm for a pitcher, for sure. One, two to Riley. That's high. Field delivers, and that's a swing and a miss for Riley. Another strikeout for Jack Cryfield, the lefty having a great day. Yeah, up to eight strikeouts on the day. Only four hits allowed. So back to the top of the order for the Pirates. Monroe's 0 for 1 with the walk. He was 3 for 4 the game prior. This 
one's low. 1-1. One, one. Takes inside. Three one count. Maybe trying to draw his second walk of the match. Let's see what Cryfield has to say about it. This is popped high in the left short gap, and it's catch is made by Dennis Bond. And just like that, two outs. We'll see if there's still any hope from the left-handed bat of Sean Wasserman. And he's been great up to this point. Base running has been a struggle as Cryfield has caught him both times, but he is still two for two with two singles. Yeah, I was gonna say, we were, I think we were all looking to see if that fouled its way into the football field, but got the top of the backstop. One strike early to number one. He swings and misses at some high velocity from Cryfield. Like we mentioned, an 83 mile per hour fastball from the lefty. That used to be 73 miles per hour in 2022. He's gotten it up 10 miles per hour in a fairly short span of time. Yeah, and the Pirates have had problems with it today. They've struggled to get on base outside of the first two innings. Could it be a one, two, three inning? Not there at least, outside ball. But still plenty of wiggle room. Jack up at the bump. Now just a 1-2 count. Wasserman doesn't go. Two's all around. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Wasserman's two for two. Will he stay perfect? No, he oh. will not as he is sent back to the dugout looking and another strikeout for Cryfield. Yeah, and he's saying right there, that's that's above the letters. You know, your traditional strike zone is gonna be around the bottom of the letters to the knees and that looked high from even up here. I'm, I'm petitioning for the one day they get to use us as a replay booth. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be nice. And after that, five innings for Cryfield, four hits Allowed one run, but it wasn't even earned, so still not a single earned run on the board for Cryfield. Two walks and nine strikeouts, so that's 17 strikeouts and counting in his last two appearances. As Jack Cryfield has been making a statement. Mulhern is still on the bump looking to regain his rhythm. Trying to keep this lead where it is because your bats only got six more outs to go before this game is over.
Top of the six underway. First pitch a strike from Mohern still on the bump. Breeders up to bat, 0 for 2. And now he's put himself to a 1 1 count. Swings and misses. A good breaking ball there from Mohern. Mohern not only an 84 mile per hour fastball. 73 mile per hour curveball and a 77 mile per hour changeup. There's an athletic play by Greewe. He makes the grab out in right field. Looked like he bobbled it for a moment, but he keeps hold of it and gets out number one in fashion. And that's your once a game Jet Greewe diving catch. Yeah. Saw uh, an arguably better one where he went on to both knees against Barrington. Dugout really getting to the head of Mohern once again. They've been chirping him all game. That one's high. 3 0 count. And Bond might cruise his way to a walk. And Mohern's at 106. So this is. Almost for sure his last batter. If we go off of his last game total of pitches. Oh wow, Bond was headed for first, but that is ruled a strike. Yeah, looking at our cam, that looked like a strike too, so. Crucial full count pitch, and it's in the dirt. And Bond gets on base for the second time as he walks once again. And out comes Miramontes. This is probably the end of the road for Mulhern today. And overall, you can't argue with the line for Mulhern. Of course, three earned runs is above his typical but I mean, the front bats have really been clicking today and that wind is sure not helping in the outfield. And even with that play we saw at first base, that Sherman couldn't acquire the ball. So Mulhern does everything he can. Gets a firm handshake from Bellow as he heads to watch from the dugout for the remainder of this one. Final line, 5.1 innings pitched, seven hits allowed, four runs, but only three earned runs, four walks and 12 strikeouts. Yeah, strikeout Goodness. total remains high. I actually think he's going to play the infield here. Oh, wow. Third base it looks like where he's walking to right now. Yeah, no, he's doing a swap with David Odo, who will now be pitching. So and That explains why nobody was in the bullpen just now, because the pitcher on deck was waiting at third base. One hundred and nine pitches, seventy of them strikes from Mulhern. Faced twenty seven batters. And Odo will have to face the top of the order to start. Nelson, Graba, O'Brien. There's one out and a man on first. That is Bond. And not only does he have to face the top of the order, but his first batter is three for three, and he's put the ball wherever the Pirates haven't been on almost every first pitch. As Nelson has been a threat. Chase Nelson. Looks like the softball game up ahead just concluded. Anybody able to read that scoreboard? 
Six five. Six five of loss, I think. Yeah, because the pirates are on the bottom of the scoreboard, just like they are here. Well, at least it was a good game. Can't complain. The softball team has been real solid. I believe they just beat Hoffman yesterday, sixteen to zero. You know, those first pitches a strike, always a good sign. They look back at first. But Dennis Bond is in there with plenty of time. That one is accidentally fouled off by Chase Nelson. He now finds himself in an own two count. Wind gusts don't sound fun. See it on the camera shaking like crazy. Again, that thing's taking the brunt of these gusts straight into center, right center field. And Odo gets the strikeout of Chase Nelson as he's finally retired for the first time. Now three for four still, an incredible line. And now Odo finds himself one out from getting out of this inning. Odo will look back to first. pitch we'd like to thank you all for being here and the love in the subscriber section is always appreciated Pitch from Odo finds the strike zone. Yeah, now with a 3 1 count. You expect a swing here if it's anything good. Let's see if the Pirates can induce a ground ball here. count. Odo looks back again. They might have gotten him that time, and they did! That's a timing call right there. He might have gotten under the tag. That's certainly what the first base coach believes, but at first base, Bond took a really big jump. Odo spins around and nabs him at first. Lesson learned for Bond. Don't play games with Odo as he gets the third out. In shocking fashion, and we will be right back. And by the way, Jack Cryfield still out there as they look to try to shove some more.
And welcome back. David Odo, who just started off his pitching pretty solid now. Has to face the other pitcher in Jack Cryfield. And we get some of the the game here between the dugout on in the pitcher. We're, we're seeing Fremp do it the whole game, and now Palatine's trying to do it back. And there's a ball. And they're right underneath our press box, so we're going to hear them even more than what Frem was doing. Is there's some action going out to the Frem bullpen. Yeah, I mean, even against Barrington, you didn't really hear him. But you got to do something to get into the head of Jack Cryfield, who hasn't even had a single earned run yet. Yeah, and he's been dominant the last few innings, so maybe some extra noise could help him out. How about the Pirates? And they're quick to talk it over here now. Readers did this last time when Cryfield was out of tune. And it happened to work, so. Cryfield on the mound, 91 pitches and 20 batters faced. And there's another ball. Three one from Kribel. And that's gonna be a walk for Odo. Yeah, the pitcher's meeting already real quick. Cryfield up to 93 pitches now. And with a runner on first, they're, they might even be giving time here for the pitcher out in the bullpen. Gonna try to get a look at that. And that is Kyle Halvadia. But for now, oh wow. Almost hit him in the face. And th that's not intentional, but he's definitely feeling the nerves now of the runner on first and the heckling from the, f from the bench on the third base side. Who knew a dugout could play such a part? I mean, yeah, it's the closest you can get to a student section for a baseball mm -hmm. game. I mean, you try and get some people to come out here to cheer on from the bleachers, but you have the dugout right close to the field as well. Well, it seems that this wind has dragged even some of the fans into the box with us, so not the most enjoyable weather. But we've got some great Palatine athletes in here joined along us. Peterson swung for the fences, but missed entirely there. The fences are waiting for a home run in this wind. Seriously, I'm yeah. so shocked we haven't seen a home run. Yeah, especially with the ball being put up into the air. You'd expect a gust of wind to catch hold of one and blow it over the fence. Got to look back to first. Two one to future Wildcat and Toby Peterson. Added to the Southeastern Conference after the MSL. And one thing that's been so valuable to Fremd is Cryfield being a lefty, keeping these runners stationed on first base. So often, Fremd has been able to move a runner over to second. And then get him home with a base hit. And Palatine's been stuck with runners at first, and runners 
out advancing to second. Peterson swings and misses. It's in the dirt and actually just ruled a strikeout initially. Yeah, so that's what it is. You cannot have a drop third strike with a runner on first unless there's two outs. That just keeps the base paths, you know, clean. Because otherwise, then you'd have to force the runner on first to second base. That's just part of the rule. Toby Peterson 0 for 3 with three strikeouts. And that's why we have our expert up here in Emmett. Always appreciate it. Baseball is not my hockey, but we're definitely working on it. From game one, all it takes is to watch a couple innings and you learn a lot more. And I'm sure all you listeners are getting really educated with Emmett up here in the booth. And this pitch gets by Frieders. Free base for Odo. That's big because now Odo finally is able to advance into scoring position. I mean, that's the first runner in scoring position in a long Since, time. Yeah, like the second inning. And now he's got a little bit more wiggle room to take a, a larger lead and potentially score here. Right there from Mulhern, now at a one, two count. Just gotta hope you put this ball into play. You can afford the strikeout, but it'll hurt the probabilities of driving in Odo from second. And that is in the dirt, ruled out. And in that one, the umpire said he made the catch, because in that case, you first base is unoccupied, so Strike three right there. So now, a lot of weight relies on the shoulders of Sherman. Pirates have four more outs to give. We are here in the bottom of the sixth. Cryfield, 103 pitches now. And reaching that territory of where Mulhern was taken out of the game, 110 is usually the limit pretty much anywhere. Oh, that got by. Odo's going to go to third. And he's going to be in. And they called for a pickoff back to second base, I think on the shortstop's judgment. But the shortstop left out was getting the baseball, and that one goes into center field untouched pretty much. Relatively easy for Odo get to get to third and now base hit for sure and score a run. 2-0 count for Sherman. He zips this out to left field. It might be in the gap, and it will land. Diving grab attempted by O'Brien. He can't do it. And Sherman has a standing double. The Pirates now only trail by a pair. Yeah, that ball was absolutely smoked into left center. Wind is not working with him that time as the wind is now going almost to completely the right field side and nearly blew that into the path of Johnny O'Brien who sprawled out to get that one and just missed. So this will end the day for Creefield and it's been a great day for him. Five point two innings pitched, five hits allowed, two runs with the only earned run coming just a few seconds ago. Three walks, 11 strikeouts. As he'll make way. And now warming up, Kyle Halvadia.
Bikes will switch from a lefty to a righty in Kyle Halvadia. As we'll start off with the duel of sophomores. It's Halvadia sophomore and so is Jack Riwi. Important at bat here, a base hit, and the game could be within one. Alvadia, first pitch. Deep down the middle and swung on and missed by Griwi. Top of the zone, call the strike. Griwi doesn't really like it. in scoring position, here's the 0-2. To end the bottom of the sixth. Alvadia, another fastball, this one's fouled off, and what a catch. Made out there by Piggott, we talked about earlier how he's an athlete, showed it there. The 0-2 again. That's outside. That curveball was close. It's a little up. Ruby saw that high enough and decided not to chase. Both that curveball is to make it look like a strike for as long as possible. On deck if needed is Liam Arnold. Would be his first plate appearance of the day. Way up on the curveball, tried it again. 2-2, this Palatine bench is gonna Get as loud as possible here. It's two consecutive balls now. I expect it's got to be a fastball or change up here. Here it is. Swing and a miss, strike three, and Halvadia able to prevent Sherman from scoring from second. And the Vikings allow one, but still lead by two. So final inning. Coming up next here on PHSP TV, I'm Luke Jordan alongside Emmett Jordan. Hope you stick around. Sure. Odo still pitching for the Pirates. We did just talk about how Arnold was on deck, and he would have pinch hit there for Ratajczak, but it was never necessary, so Odo will pitch. Well, and they'll likely pinch hit the bottom of the seventh unless this game really gets out of hand. Well, yeah, that's when you just fire on all cylinders. There's no guarantee that you even pitch again. Yeah, well, and by putting Arnold out there, you get – pretty solid hitter at the bottom of the lineup before you go to the top, try and get some base runners. Arnold's got some power too, so. Certainly a decent decision potentially. Not an ideal start for Odo. Yeah, quickly a 3-0 count. He's facing Will Graba, who's one for two. And 
it's a four ball walk. We've seen a handful of those now. Yeah, and Otto's been a little bit off. He's missed more pitches than for sure he's liked. Graba now walks for the second time today. And Miramontes is going to go talk to him as well. Now obviously it would be in the Pirates' best interest to not need to use another pitcher, but McPartland is yeah. going to take his gear out with Martin Pedersen to there the goes bullpen. Ped. Yeah, because if you need somebody to come in and get the last three outs, that be something in the works here, but they just need Odo to, to throw, some, throw some strikes and hope that the defense can get the job done, or if he can cause some strikeouts. And while we have this break, don't forget our next broadcast is Saturday. Not baseball, but track and field for distance night in Palatine. One of the biggest track events in Illinois and some of the nation's best runners come as well. So it should be a lot of fun. And that's 5 to 10 p.m. So the heat schedule and all will be posted on PHS underscore PTV on Instagram in a few days. It will be, for most of us, working or producing our first track meet. So it will definitely be something new and unique. Next baseball broadcast is on Monday versus Schaumburg. Emmett will have the call for that one. Is that the game where I believe you have Ryan Kick as your partner? Yeah, Ryan Kick back to the color RJ? commentary role. Did a good job in that lacrosse game, I believe, a few days ago. Yeah, he, he was fun. Fun. Call it with me. And definitely appreciate all the guys that always volunteer and help us out. Heck, uh, Jack Oswald dipped on us, so we got J Flo. Running the scoreboard. I thought that was going to hit our roof for a minute. He might have. Not the case. Or yeah, maybe. I mean, I feel like we would have heard that. It's pretty loud right behind us. Probably hit a bleacher. Yep. 0 2 count to Johnny O'Brien. One for three. Recently struck out. Here it is. And that is outside. taking some signs and now he'll deliver. And that's near to the dirt. Did somebody just jump off the bleachers? No. Oh, wait, that's Larney. What Liam Arnold was collecting baseballs from the bleachers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so before his potential first at bat of the game, he is helping out collect the baseballs that have gone to the football field. The do-it-all man was about to take an at-bat, and now he's ball boy. Yeah, one day he's starting pitching, the other day he's <laughs> running around the Palatine campus getting baseballs. Full count to O'Brien. Yeah, three straight balls from Odo. Odo will look back, and no worries from Graba. Odo got the first base bag. Base coach is complaining that that could have been a balk. That what foot you move first when you spin on that fake throw. And this one is foul territory. Might be playable for Mohern, and it is. Great grab on the run from the previous pitcher for the Pirates. Yeah, and Odo probably in his head or out loud said, Thank you for making that play. Now one out. Graba still at first, of course, and now Will Klimas steps in. First 
Rangers pitch a ball. 